Puerto Rican kid, bald head, loves snakes, loves Blizzy, Sergio Chacon. Yeah. 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 What up, Pa? Yo, peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the BBS podcast. It's your boy Sergio Chacon, aka Blizzy Chacon. That's just whack. That means always gonna be dirt bag shit podcast. The BBS. Peace and welcome to the DBS Podcast, a.k.a. The Chicone Show. Hope everyone's feeling well. We're going to get right into it. My doggy dog, the man of the hour, the joke technician, my man, my man, Mark Norman. What's good, Pop? Hey, hey, good to be here. It's good to see you again. I, I, I miss you, man. It's been a while. I have to just kind of get a little closer to you, man. Bring it in, Fatty. Yeah. You look good. You smell good. You're, you're shiny. You, you look like you got some money. You got a new studio. Things are cooking. Yo, I'm doing it. Yeah, no you know snakes. What? From the outside in, it looks like I'm really doing it. Yeah. But not, not a, nothing's changed. It's well, the same shit. Great. It's all about uh, fake it till you make it. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. Yes. There you go. It's a good strip club name. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I got to commend you, dogs, because as soon as I haven't seen you since maybe just about a year ago. So I'm happy to have you back on. But as soon as like COVID hit, like your work. It's never stopped. You were diligent. You never stopped, dogs. Well, I got low self-esteem, you know, so I my stand-up was my thing. That's the only skill I have. So when that went away, I was like, well, I guess I'll go video. I guess I'll go tweet. I guess I'll go podcast. So you had to find a way to fill that work ethic, right. and I just went to other avenues. And you were doing it well. I was, oh, I was entertained. I appreciate seeing you outside of stand-up. I love your stand-up, and I want to make you – I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Oh, good. Because I'm going to throw some compliments uh, on my man. But, you know, please, he's one of my favorites. And uh. I don't, oh, I know. One of my favorites. You know what I told another one, <laughs> one of my favorites, Giannis? Yeah. I was like, I'm a big fan. And he got so annoyed with me. Yeah, yeah. He's a nut. Yeah. I said, I'm a big fan of yours. And he, like, threw the phone, and I didn't hear uh, it from him. I mean, the guy wears a dress and says the <laughs> N-word. I mean, he's a hard guy to get to – inside with to right. connect with yeah closed off yeah we all are that's why we need an audience to laugh at our childhood and uh, our dick jokes but i will continue to stare you right in the eye no! and tell you how much i love that's you even worse <laughs> good lord yo every time i hug you too like you kind of re- <laughs> give me like you re- rejection energy like yeah let's just get uh, it like you hold your breath when i hug you wow i do Good observation. Yeah, I Man, caught that. I Not today, though. You're, you're becoming one with yourself. I'm, I think you breathed a little bit. I've been seeing a, a lady. I went to therapy. I'm gay now. So I've really opened up. <laughs> therapy is the shit. You pull oh, back layers. Love then it. You, you will hit a wall. Have yes. you any walls that you haven't wanted to like? I hit a wall where you, you're like, you know when you're, you you didn't prepare for a set and you're like, what uh, what else is going on in the news? That's how I am with uh, my therapist. I'm like, I need some dirt. I got to pull some shit out. Usually it just it should pour out of you. But if you're like preparing for therapy, it's not not a good sign. Preparing for therapy. Yeah, it should just be coming out of you. You should know what you want to talk about. But when you're like, uh, was I molested? Uh, my dad's weird. My mom's fat. Like when you're going in with stuff to try to get something going. That's no good. We claim ownership over some uh, some of our problems in the past. Mm. And then we might bring them on stage, talk about them. And that's like an accomplishment. It's like, oh, I got this. Yeah. But then there's some other shit that still is a little shaky. And yeah. when the therapist taps into that and he's like digging for that, oh, it's like, yeah. I got to take this phone call. <laughs> I, got a, I got an audition in 15 minutes. I know. It's so true because we don't want to internalize. We want to go, that guy's the problem. She's the problem. But you are too. And you got to face it or you'll never get better. That's absolutely right. I um, definitely, uh, there's certain things that happened in my past where I think other people will feel uncomfortable talking about, but I claimed ownership over it. Like Good. I was touched by my sister's friend at the age. She was 13. I was nine. Ooh. And I'm, yo, and let me tell you, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Was, it was a good time. Yeah. Well, you're a survivor, but you enjoyed it. I get it. It's, it's all about how you perceive it. I was, uh, I had sex with a 55 year old when I was 16, <laughs> which I was the king of high school for a, a, a year, but I was talked to a teacher? lady about it last week, and she was like, oh, you're a pedophile survivor. I'm like, I guess I am. How about that? I never, I didn't do a one-man show. I didn't tweet about it. I didn't have a hashtag. I just sucked it up and went, hey, how about that? How was it? Great. I mean, I sucked. 
But it was great. A 55-year-old woman will put it on you. We're oh. talking about figure four leg locks, oh. submission holds. I met her husband. He was a, just an <laughs> old queef with white hair, and uh, he can't get it up. So I was rock hard from uh, from Jump Street, and she loved it. Yeah. Wait, was it this sort of situation where he watched? No, thank God. I couldn't handle that. What's that called? That's a name for that. Voyeurism? V- uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but they call them cucks. Cucks, right? yeah. yeah. Which I've also been called. So I can I can play uh, <laughs> a the lot whole of my field. white friends use that. Yeah. Cucks. Well, we can't say the F about gay, so I went to cuck. Oh. That's what all that's so all. So it, it kind of all under that one umbrella. Yeah. Cuck and the F word. Exactly, exactly. So I say queef because I'm trying to have my own words. Yo, you Johnny's in the house too. My man Johnny's taking photos. Johnny, he is the fucking man. He's very talented. You'll see by the uh, promo photos we get out of this. But uh, <laughs> I think he's gonna be with cuck holding. Yeah. Uh, he right <laughs> he's being a cuck. <laughs> what the fuck was my chance though? Before we said that, Survivor, you you got diddled by your sister's friend. No, it's. It's also funny how it's like, oh, men are at creeps, men are animals. Like, no, no, there's a lot of oh, crazy ladies out there. We queef. just don't complain about it. You have to queef. watch. Yeah, queef, which I love that. Every time I hear that word, you you own that word. Every time I think of, I, I hear that word, I think of Mark. There's a compilation. Is it compilation or compilation? Compilation. Okay, good. I always fuck that up with harassment and harassment. It's harassment. Yes, yes. All right? I guess it go either way. Could go Muslim, Caribbean. Muslim. It's fucking Muslim. I Caribbean, hate when people say Muslim. Caribbean. What right. do you say? Caribbean. Oh, see, I say Caribbean. Pirates of the I, Caribbean. I go both ways. Wait, time out. Uh-oh. Get that sound bite. <laughs> and I'm not even drinking. I'm releasing these thoughts. <laughs> Caribbean, Caribbean. I actually, I go back and forth. Interesting. I'm going right. with that one. Yeah. You're bilateral? <laughs> what is that? I'm not sure. Yeah. You Bi- I'm not ways. bilingual. Oh, yeah. It's not bilingual. Bi-wordle? Uh, who knows? Now, I like by word. It's a fun one. And I'll, you know, what is wrong with that one? All right. Which, by the way, I'm Puerto Rican and I'm not bilingual, which is fucking annoying. I'm, I'm a Puerto Rican who doesn't speak Spanish. Oh, and damn. I give it. I get, I've given up. Is there anything? Wait, wait, I'm, I'm moving too fast. Okay, I'm okay. having too much of a Slow good time. Down. We're going to hold that. You got to watch because I'm going to forget this shit. You're um, Mark Norman's savage moments. Who did that shit? Who sliced that up? Some guy out in the ether, in the internet. And I fucking I awesome. It. Yo, that shit that you had, what were you? In the Midwest? And that, uh, and you were doing early morning yeah, news? Yeah, the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, dogs, you on fire. Dang, well, that's funny you say that, because I've done 18 late nights and all this gay porn. Nothing has caught <laughs> fire. And then I do one late, or one our morning show that nobody watches in the middle of Cleveland. It's 8 in the morning. I'm hungover. It's a Friday morning. You don't want to be there. You, you've done them. They're hell. And I just said, fuck it. I'm, I'm being myself. And then it just took, and it just caught fire. So you never know in this biz. Well, I think it was a certain... This uh, in the moment, yeah, right. Feel, I think you say you were hungover. I couldn't tell that you were hungover. I was but, annoyed. But when you're hungover, you ever go into like the next day hungover? But you got a rhythm, yes. of the drunk, right? Shit. Yes, yeah. So it looked like you were exactly rhythm. You were hitting everything. Oh, you thanks. weren't thinking about any of it. No. And she was having fun, but also you were pushing it. You put your hand yeah, on her shoulder. Yeah. Oh, is that a me too hey, mo- right, mo- moment? Right. Well, it was all. They say you're the most creative when you're angry, and I completely agree. Like you ever get angry and just go on a rant and you're zinging and zanging because you're not self-conscious you're just letting it, the emotions fly and i was angry in that clip so when she's like how old are you i'm like well black don't crack that's me going yeah yeah i just want to get out of here what are we doing <laughs> and you want me to you want to be funny with me like i can run circles around you there skanky what are you crazy <laughs> so i was just like ah, i'm just gonna do what i'm doing instead of being like yeah you know what's my process well i, I write in the shower <laughs> no you fucking uh, you jerk off something hits you you write it down you move on with your life if they they are the fucking worst the worst it's the same shit each and every time they yeah. look uncomfortable yes that's how they come to this goofy ass smile yes exactly they want you to be funny but not your funny so i gotta be your funny but that ain't funny so it's this horrible situation for a comedian so I just said, I'm not doing it anymore. I've done 20 years of these things. I'm being myself. And it just clicked. Oh, man. Was so, I, 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 I have to admit, I've watched that shit oh, I, like I, a I dozen times. It. Thank you. The, the, and I don't know if I've seen any of your late night sets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck about that. 
it clicked and i'm i'm not a I, at the time i didn't sell out anywhere i wasn't a draw and that weekend sold out after that which i never done what, what was it cleveland cleveland Great club. You were there recently, I think, with Chris. I don't think I've, I've done Cleveland. Oh, okay. Is that Hilarities? Yeah. I've heard about it. But we were uh, just recently in Arizona. Oh, I love Arizona. Yeah, at the House of Comedy. Oh, that's a big room. Big room. And they don't give a... F- they, don't, they, don't, they don't care. Oh, like, it's they... a different world out there. Boop, boop, boop. Pistols <laughs> in the air and shit. Yeah, they don't give it. It's a dry air. They don't give a shit out there. It's, it's a yeah, vast open. It reminds yes. me of Texas a bit. Yes, exactly. It's, it's a flat, dry Texas. And uh, there's no history in Arizona. You know, technically, we got the Alamo. We got Dallas with the Kennedy. Arizona's like, this place is pretty new, and we <laughs> do what the fuck we want. And if you want to come in, you got you to gotta assimilate. It feels like everybody's on the same page in Arizona. There's nobody That's an interesting like interesting observation. Ah. I didn't even think about that. Although I did uh, like a little tour and they were talking about they had gold miners. That's a little bit of history. Okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. And they were telling, they were talking about how the gold miners work like 20 hours a day for like 30 cents. Yeah. And they would check the miners before they left work to make sure they didn't take any nuggets. You think I would be leaving that shit dealing with dynamite, dealing with uh, you know, caves that could potentially have lethal gases, right? And I'm not gonna boof a nugget in my ass, of course. Put that gold nugget right up the pooper, <laughs> yeah, of course. Boof, I forgot about boof, yeah. That's a that's a very that's a prison word, ah, <laughs> you put it in your skin pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, I, I worked at a restaurant and I stole the silverware for Christ's sake. So I get it. But that's the other funny thing is like my girl used to work at LinkedIn. It's right over here. It's beautiful. It's catered lunch. It's coffee machine, espresso, candy jars everywhere. I was a janitor. I was a furniture mover. My dad, I was like, hey, my dad came in town. I was like, let's go eat at LinkedIn. It's the best meal in town and it's free. And he goes, <laughs> LinkedIn, Wait, what's that? Okay, he's like an old school Southern guy. He couldn't believe it. He's like, man, when I was work, I used to work at a typewriter factory. We were jumping out the windows. If you missed a day of work, you got your ass kicked. You didn't get a lunch. You didn't get a break. You didn't get a a, a Christmas off. Now they're giving you shit, and people are still complaining. He was pissed. He went <laughs> off. They we, they threw him out of there. Wait, so your father worked. Oh, he's a he's like an old school workhorse guy. So that's where you get it from. Maybe you don't like to admit it, but you're super fucking diligent. Like, oh yeah, I, I, well, I just don't want to think about stuff. I'd rather put it into mm. working or comedy. Yeah, uh, that's a that's not a bad thing. I guess. I guess, but there is there is that. I guess it can be a bad thing if we're not dealing with with certain I, with certain issues. When I got sober, I, I became like that. But, right, you know, in different areas, right. but not with one thing. Like you're super intent with stand up. Yeah, I was like moving around a lot. Like I would fucking work out, so I peed like rust. Whoa, yeah, in the beginning. Whoa, and now it's just like I want to hold a snake. I want to do jokes. Yeah. I want to be, you know, I want to do a podcast. That's healthier. Like, you're a renaissance man. Yeah, yeah, maybe there's a little more of a balance. Balance is good because I get friends yelling at me. They'd say I'm married to the sea. You know, I'm what like the old, like an old fisherman out there who's on the, oh, got on it, the got boat it. with for 60 years with the hat and the pipe and the beard and he's <laughs> sunbeaten and uh, he's grizzled, you know, like they're like, you have a great life. You got a car. You got a lady with huge cans. You got a cool apartment. <laughs> Squeeze them every now and then. What? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. I got to like, as my therapist says, where's the joy? You know, all you do is work and bitch and moan and complain. Where's the joy? Well, that's another thing I don't see. Maybe you're bitching and moaning. I never thought of you as a complainer. Okay, I, always, I you, appreciate you, that. You're kind of that, you know, pick up, you know, what was it, a bootstrap guy yeah. at work. I never heard you really complain. Complain. I try not you to do, be a downer. At least it's funny. Right, right. It's not the worst of someone complaining and not being funny. Oh, what a nightmare. That's a big, big flaw. Yo, you have. can complain, but you got to be funny. Yes, exactly. Or don't complain. Like, don't complain because no one cares. I heard a great quote once. They said, why would you put your bad, you wouldn't put your bad breath on me. Why are you putting your bad mood on me? <laughs> and I remember being like, whoa. You know the guy who comes in, he's a downer. Hey, I got divorced. My mom died. Uh, you know, And you're like, all right, we're hanging out. Pick it up, bitch. So I recently had a uh, an encounter. I'm going to call it an encounter with someone. Group fitness. I do group fitness in what the park. I'm, I'm, t- I'm training people out in the park. Oh, group you're that fitness. guy. I'm that guy now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's 100% in the pocket. 
Ooh. Yeah. How do you 20, put that out there? Like, you, so it's, it's people I've been training for a long oh, okay, time. Okay. But with COVID and everything, they don't they don't particularly care to go back in the gym. I got you. So I got a nice network of people, good people. You That's know, they great. work hard. They're having fun. I bring the equipment out. I got a blue wagon. I bring the pit bull out. Yeah. She's dressed in a sloth sweater to, for the entertainment. Uh, you know. And so it was like six girls I'm training. A Puerto and Rican with a pit bull? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rarity. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so there's this one girl and she has something on her hand and she's doing forward lunges for the warm up. Mm. And I said, oh, why don't you put uh, your keys in your pocket? And she says to me, oh, well, I have uh, these women's workout pants and they don't have pockets. You know why? Because they don't make women's workout clothes with pockets because they don't give a shit about women. Mm. And I was like, whoa. And then, and then like five long seconds passed. Yeah. And she said, they really don't. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. So I was like, where did that come from? Yes. It's like, have you been dealing with some shit personally? Or is it just like the, the tone that's, mm. or that's, that's surfacing on social media? Right. Because you've been quarantined. How much of this... Uh, equ- and it, Absorbing. It, well, yeah, how much of this fucking uh, misogynist shit have you been going through yeah. in quarantine? Right. Like you haven't been at the office getting your, your butt pinched. And Good point. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe she's not getting the pay that she wants. And yeah. it's a male figure. But I just don't like the uh, the big jo- I, They don't care about women. Who? I mean, this could be a female designed <laughs> legging, you know? Like, how do we know it's men or... I, I don't know. I don't like the blaming. That's what I was saying about the internal. She's got something going on, obviously. Dogs, there's plenty of women's workout pants that have a big ass pocket. I've seen them, yeah. Because you go, look at the air. Oh, that's a <laughs> fucking phone. Damn. You know, you see the bulge. But uh, yeah, no, I think you're right. So something's going on. And and, and then you want to go, I think there are pants. And they go, shut oh, up, man. Like, don't yeah. mansplain me. And you're like, ah. That's I'm exactly what this. I just kept on counting because that's what, that's what personal trainers do. I get paid to keep count. <laughs> <laughs> One, perfect, two, and every now and then I'll throw it. You're doing great. Uh, it's a perfect <laughs> job for an autistic. You just get to count or an OCD. Well, that's why I'm doing well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wow. it, 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 she hit me with the, it was a three piece combo. Yeah. They don't make they don't make uh, workout pants or, uh, with pockets for women because they don't give a shit about women. They really don't. Whoa. <laughs> the, the bun was shaking. <laughs> Furious. And she was that angry while exercising. Exercising is supposed to when you get all that shit out, like you, you you emote, and she's just still pissed. Yeah. Damn. So what'd you do? I ignored it. Yeah. I picked my battles, dog. Because that Smart. was early. That was early. Yeah. You know? So now I just talk about it with everyone else except her. That's very healthy. You know what I think it is, too? It's like you said. It's all this is online. We're in a pandemic. We're just getting hit by all this Twitter and shit all day long. So people absorb it. And this is a controversial take here. And hang tight there, sloppy jalopy, because I don't want to <laughs> scare you. But we got all this Asian shit going down, and they're getting beat up on the sidewalk and on the subway, and it's horrific to watch. I've seen the videos. They're fucking wild. But I think the more we go stop Asian hate, stop Asian hate, the more people start thinking like, do I hate Asians? Maybe I do. (laughs) And I think it's this weird kind of commercial for Asian hate. Even though we're saying stop it, it's putting it out there. And I think it's causing more Asian hate. I, I don't know. It's no, a theory. I think there is some truth in that. I also... Who hates Asians? I never even heard of that. Well, hey, listen, if you want to... Look, I'm going to talk about where I'm from, because that's what I fucking oh, know. Okay, right? please, this please. Like, I'm from the inner city projects, and Asians were always the victims. Is that right? Yeah, we used to beat... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they used to beat up the delivery guys all the time. Oh, well, delivery guys. Yeah, yeah I mean, because they were, they, were, they, were, they were immigrants. They didn't speak the language. Uh, the same thing with Mexicans. Right. You know, they, they're not speaking, uh, you know, uh, not English speaking, you know, uh, newbies coming into the neighborhood. Right. You know, they got the low-end jobs or whatever. Yes. And it, it, it was, it's bullshit and it's fucking wrong, but it's been going on for some time oh, now. Oh, I didn't know that right so uh, i say that to say this is not a brand new thing granted i'm sure there are isolated cases where it's directly connected to uh you know covid and stuff but i feel like these these things are just being highlighted now because it's the talk of the hour yes it's a hashtag now it's a hashtag now uh and i had to I, I have a problem listen it's a it's an issue but i i definitely have a problem where the guy who killed, who went on the rampage, yeah, immediately being labeled 
a white supremacist. Right. And I'll right, tell you right, why, right. because I think if I'm not mistaken, I think there was two others who were who were two white people got two killed. white people were, and also that's under the rug. But yeah, you don't hear about no them at because all. it doesn't fit the the story, the headline, the narrative. Right. So it makes me feel a little bit like you, the guy what he did was, was despicable. It's wrong, but I don't know. It, it's I think it goes with the story that's being developed yes, here. Yes. Like white supremacists killing Asians. Yes. It's wrong either way, and it might have been racially motivated. But I don't know. If that's he was per se a white supremacist, I don't know either because he was getting handies from these gals for a while, and I feel like a white supremacist we we get a handy from a couple of honkies, <laughs> you know. Like if I hated uh, Muslims, I'm not going to the Muslim hand job joint. They were so quick to jump on that. Yes, of course, but that's why the news is so dangerous, and they're immoral. They're bad people at the news because they just want those clicks so bad, and they go, "This is the way the wind's blowing. Let's stir this shit up." And you go, "I know, but these are people's lives and families and human beings." And they go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah," and they're, it's ironic because their whole message is, "We got to help these people," but uh, fuck them. Well, they're all people. I thought it was all about treating people equally. I know, but that doesn't fit the headline. We, we need this. We need this right. story to move. It's the headline. It's gross. And and, and the fact the, the 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 fact of the matter is, from what I see, I see a lot of blacks on Asian crime. That's just been going on for years. I know, I know. You so know? do I. But you yeah. can't really bring that up because then it's a weird yeah. racial thing, and you're like, I thought we were just trying and, to help and people. And I see Latinos do. What I'm saying is, it's a mixed bag. And, yes. and people are being shitty towards each other. But I don't think it should be persuaded, like, driven in that one way. Right. It needs to be addressed, but I don't think it should be driven like, oh, it's, it's white supremacy. Yes. I mean, they, I'm sure white supremacists that still exist. Of course, know, of course. But I don't know if they should be given that, uh, if they should be given that. That label. That, 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 yeah, I don't think they should get props for that specific one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I don't the, think they deserve that the one. The Dylan Roof kid who went to the black church. All right, he's got yeah, he it. Des- he he wins the that. white supremacist trophy. Right. But this guy could just be a weirdo incel horn dog psycho. But but what what my point is with the Asian thing is I mean they got videos of a guy on the sidewalk just kicking an Asian lady in the face and there was no robbery or anything. That's where I'm like the delivery guy in the projects I get it. He's got a wad of cash, he doesn't speak English. It's an easy mark. But the lady on the sidewalk in front of a hotel in Times Square, I'm like where is that coming from? Yeah, that's I don't know. new to me. Like, look, look, we've all beat up our fair share of uh, minorities, but <laughs> why the lady on the sidewalk thing? I, oh, I think it's a, it's a mix of different things. Okay. And it's interesting that we're talking about this because I really don't know, but I have a feeling that since COVID hit, mm. a lot of facilities that have seen. mentally That's ill true. people, there's I no doubt about it. it. A, there's a lot more people. Good point. If anyone was on the brink of insanity, this probably pushed them over. Yes. Maybe they're not taking their medication. Yes. Maybe they don't have access to it. Uh, and then the people who are running the clinics, I think in the, in the hospitals, maybe things are just so jam packed. They kind of, you know, they let some of these guys out of jail. Yeah. It's a mix, it's, a it's a of, mix of different things. I've seen it. Uh, Crime is through the roof everywhere, all over the city. There's a bunch of dirt bags outside. Oh, I yeah. got to tell you, I don't mind it that much <laughs> because it's exciting. I guess, but you don't want your uh, your lady getting hit no, with a no, no, no. It's, it's, it's like this, man. If it doesn't have to do with me, uh, I'm just like, oh, shit. Because it also makes it feel like, damn, I got my shit together. I'm not like this guy. That's true, too. You, know, you always got to keep too. the dirt bags close to you. It's a good barometer of how well you're doing in life. <laughs> I know. That's a good point. But look, I got mugged three times in a year when I first moved here. And then things kind of got a little cleaner in the city. And I was enjoying I was at the M&M store jerking off, having a great time. But now it feels like old New York again. My girl's got the Citizen app. Don't ever open uh, that fucking thing. Yeah, my thing. wife had it for Woo! a minute. Machete wielding, angry psycho at the park, two feet away from you. You're like, all right, let's go this way. Oh, guys carrying a head in a bag. Watch out for him. You're like, what the fuck is this Grand Theft Auto? Where are we living here? I know. It kind of feels like Grand Theft it Auto. It does. Like, remember the movie? Uh, the movie, the uh, video game Double Dragon. Yes. <laughs> I know I'm killing prostitutes. I'm peeling off in Ferraris. It's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, just yesterday I'm walking my dog, and which, by the way, it's great to have a, a 75 pound pit bull. Because for the most part, you got to be really crazy to fuck around. Yeah, me. hell yeah. But this dude, he was like six foot, six foot 
nine, tall, uh -oh. shoulders like this. Oh, yeah. Like Dwayne Wade's shoulders. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. It? One of those basketball players with the wide shoulders. Uh -huh. But a clear indication that he didn't have his shit together is that his <laughs> boots were just open. Oh, like, big, know. big red flag. Yeah, and the fingernails were dirty, but he had a beautiful body. Okay. Like, I was like, yo, what's your <laughs> regimen? Because yeah. I'm a trainer, and I should look like that. All right, I think his regiment's beating up uh, <laughs> old lady Ming Tao on Canal Street. <laughs> That's good cardio. So he comes up to me. Makes eye contact with my dog. And my dog, she's a fucking sweetheart. Yeah. You know, I would like for her to read the situation a little better. You know, hook her ears up, straighten out her tail. She does the exact opposite. Her ears go back. Uh, she's like a seal. Right. <laughs> the, the, the the yeah. yeah. The, the tail is wagging. Right. Like heart. You can hear it go. Uh -huh. And he just takes her. We both had, and he just gives her a good scratch under her ribs. She's oh, like, geez. She's like, yeah. And, and I'm just like, oh, she's not very friendly. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just lying. Oh, my God. And he said, I used to have these back in Mississippi. And he said, I had a bunch of them. They like this. And now she's, I could tell my dog is not feeling uncomfortable. Yes. It's like a girl that's been compliment, you know, shot a little compliment. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like getting overboard. A guy yes. grabs her wrist. Like, come here. Yeah. So, like, Curry, my dog is looking back at me. I'm like, you're on your own with this one. You're the beast. Uh, <laughs> bite him. Yeah, man. She wasn't, like, reading the situation. And they gives her a smack in the ass. Bah! Ooh. Yeah, like, but, like, a playful, but he's a heavy-handed dude. Yeah, yeah. And, like, she, like, darted, like, forward. Like, oh, no! And then she, like, looked at me, and it, we were all uncomfortable. And I was like, okay, got to go now. I think my voice cracked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a trained fighter, and this is the way I'm behaving. Wow. Uh, I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I love them dogs. She's thick, too. I was like, ah! <laughs> Jesus, this guy have a boner or what? This is getting a little sexual. It, it was weird though. Like you expect the dog to read the situation, yeah. And maybe he was harmless, but he was just dirty. And it's unpredictable. You never know where he's gonna go with it. You know? Yeah. That's scary too, because it's your dog, and you, you you don't want any trouble. But this is a living thing. This is your buddy, and your buddy is <laughs> pampered. You know, he's got a good life. And he's just scratching his head on dirty nails. I don't like it. So I was getting hit. I think it's the weather. Yeah. Right. So I was that was one, and then two. I'm walking by Sixth uh, Street, and there's a nice gay bar there. It's always there's always like a drag queen coming out, sure. smiling, flirting with me. I like walking through there. I it's love like, a drag. Feels queen. lively. Yeah. And it's fun. And you know now it's starting to lift, and you know people are out in the outdoor shed, and they're watching like a 1930s movie, and you know. It's a bunch of gays hanging out, having a great time. I walk by them, like, oh my God, great looking dog. What I know this bar. I know exactly you what you're know, talking about. They play the movies at night. Exactly. Yeah. The next shed on over, I see a guy wrapping up his fucking calf muscle oh, and shoelace. Oh, boy. He got the, the syringe in his mouth. That could be the vaccine. <laughs> You never know. He's helping him out. That's probably the second shot because they always fall asleep after. <laughs> Hits them hard. But yeah, so what have the heroin addict? Yeah, and it's just it's just crazy to see that contrast of people enjoying themselves, yeah. you know, doing twirls, and then there's a guy that's fucking taking the vaccine without a doctor around. Oh yeah. Well, New York's back, I guess. That's some, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely coming back yeah yeah because you've seen new york the whole time you've mm -hmm. seen the 80s the 90s this you know so there's pros and cons you know like sure we got the m m store and we all make fun of how dainty it is now and there's Dwayne reed on every corner to chase bank and mom and pop is gone the dive bars are gone but you're not getting your your fucking hands cut off on third street too yeah so the difference is between crime and in the 80s and the early 90s, I felt like the city thrived. There was a big part of the city that thrived off of organized crime. Yes. Like the Italian mob. Yes. There was like big time drug dealers. Like it was a vein in the city that was really pulsating. Right now, I feel like it's a bunch of petty crimes. Right, going on. right. Like, you know, and they're not necessarily better, but you know, I don't feel like it's really... I don't know if it's like a, a real stronghold. Yes. I think it's just more like punks and like, you right, know, like right. and, and machete wielding. Yeah. <laughs> so what's worse? What's better? What do you like better? <laughs> I guess I like the mob better than the uh, the guy with the machete. Yeah, I think the mob is, they, you know, they do their thing. And you know, the, the, the machete wielding punks, they're like, whoever's close to me. <laughs> yeah, Get away exactly. from me. 
Exactly. And like, they all wear jogging pants. I mean, there's a couple comedy clubs in this city where wouldn't it be great if you got heckled and you're like, hey, get the mob on it. And they just throw <laughs> the guy in the river. Right. That'd be great. Uh, how, how do you feel about hitting the road these days? You've been hitting the road. But hitting the road like a madman. I love it because New York is such a bubble and everybody's mad at everybody and it's freezing. We're eating outdoors and the machete. And then you go to Columbus, Ohio. Things are open. Everybody's in a great mood. Everybody's like, what are you talking about? What, 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 happened, what happened to Asian people? They don't know anything because they're not living in this fucking cesspool of hate. And they're just like, oh, I got a family. I got kids and we're going to get a smoothie and go see your show. I was like, great. And it's just nice. It's nice to get out. You go to Texas now. Smiles. How you doing, ma'am? You know, you hit the hat. <laughs> I, I love it. It's so it's so funny because New York has always always had that arrogance. Yeah. I'm like, Welcome to New York, the best city, and we're all like upside down right yes, now. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and then you go, I go to fucking Arizona. They're like, Welcome to Arizona. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. so weird. We're having a pool party. You know, bring a keg, and every girl's in a bikini, and it's great. And then you come back here, your luggage gets stolen, there's a guy shitting in a bag, and uh, the cabbie doesn't speak English, and he's making fun of, you know, Allah, or whatever it is. So, it, it, I love the city, I own a place here, I'll never leave, I, I'm a New Yorker now, all the way through and through, but it's good to get out. And these these road clubs are great, you know you go do a show in Brooklyn, and they hate you from the get-go, you're a, maybe a too confident hetero male, it feels like there's a weird kind of anger towards you what is that about i feel like uh, these uh some of these comedy venues like in brooklyn like these old spots or whatever i don't even know to label them they're kind of like a college sh gig yes you know because they have some somewhere recently they had some sort of political or spiritual awakening and they just figure i'm gonna hold on to what i feel yeah tightly to me and if you make fun of that it's a problem. It's yes. problematic. And they'll use words like that. It's yes, problematic. It's problematic. And it's, and it's triggering. Right. I hate those words, by the way. Uh, well, we all do. We all do. Any any comic, real comic does. Because we're just trying to do our art and what we think is funny. And you're looking to be mad because it gives you a personality. This is You've cultivated this as who you are now, as the guy or the girl who shuts this shit down. Even though they're just words and there's real problems and you think you're a hero. But this is nothing compared to... A woman getting her click cut off in uh, wherever the fuck, uh, Africa. My my point is, I went, I did a show in Brooklyn last night. I don't know night. if Sadat really does that. Yeah, I, was, I don't know. I, I, I don't was even. confident, though, when yeah. I said it. <laughs> you were, and I bought it. <laughs> but uh, I was in a show in Brooklyn last night. I bombed. Everything bombed. They hated me. They weren't, they didn't want to like me. Then I went to Long Island two nights ago. They loved it. And it was weird because in Brooklyn, they called me a, a bigot. And then in Long Island, they called me a fag. <laughs> and I was like, man, I've gone 20, 20 feet or 20 inches on a map and I'm getting called a fag here. And these guys are nicer. And then I get called uh, problematic here and they're mean. They're, they don't get it that they're the bad guy in the movie. They think, I know I, I sound like an asshole, but they think they're helping. And it's good. I guess their heart is in the right place. But... They're so behind and they're so confused because it's not this. This comedy show, this joke I'm telling isn't the problem. It's it's uh, real hate and you guys have it and you don't realize it. You're putting that hate out in the world. You're angry. You're mad. You're internalizing with some, some deep shit. And you're just going to a show to be upset. And it's not healthy and it's not good for the world and it's not good for the country. And... Can't you see? Everything's in hock right now. We got to, all we talk about is get away from negative people, preach positivity, and then you go online and all these activists are fucking mean as shit. And then some guy kills himself and they go, if you're hurting, reach out. Well, bitch, I was hurting and you pushed me over the edge with your fucking hashtags. So stop yelling at everybody. And I, I get the irony. I'm yelling, but uh, we're just trying to have fun and live. We're all going to die one day, you queef. Oh, oh, oh. This is it. We're on earth for one blip and you're going to ruin it with your dumb bullshit. I know, with your woke bullshit. Hey, yes. which, which, by the way, that that woke, yeah. is that, is that, that's not even a real word. Uh, well, it's it's also cultural appropriation. Yeah. It's like that. the black people used to say yes, that. Yes, and then the, the white ladies took it, and then yeah. they'd bitch about cultural appropriation. Yeah. They're they they, ran, with, they ran with it hard. Yes, of course. I can't stand it. it I annoys can't stand me. it, and black people don't like it either. <laughs> well, certain black people like it. Wow. You know it's black people like it. 
<laughs> Some black people don't. Sorry, that'll no. be a blog. <laughs> I'm sorry, I went off on a tear, but it's just no. it's just so misguided. They're so misguided. They don't get it that they're uh, the square, they're the bad the square, guy. The, my square black friends like that shit. Yeah, don't the say square. That. Look, I did a college gig not too long ago, and I was doing sex jokes, and, and they're they're clenching their pearls, and I'm like. You guys don't get it. You you call yourself progressive. You're like conservative. You're like a conserv. You're like Reagan's wife. Oh, oh my God! How dare you? I'm like, <laughs> you should be having fun. You twat. You're 18. Live your life. You retard. What is wrong with you? Right. This is like you just heard somewhere that this is bad or problematic or this is this is not good and we need to shut this shit down. And I'm a hero. Like you're an idiot. You're you're nobody. You're a speck and you're just a bummer. And we don't need a bummer right now. We just yeah, lived in a bummer. And if you're not interested in it, there's many other things you can do. You, yes. don't, you, don't, you don't have to fucking protest it. Just don't go to or support it. You know how many things I don't like? Right. You know how many things I don't like? Yeah. In the business that we're in. And I just don't listen yeah, to it. Yeah, you move on. I move the fuck on. And you find people you, you know, gel with and, and, and that's then it. relate to. And that's it. And that's life. Yeah. It's such a it's just like a weird dictator mentality. I don't like this. It must cease to exist. It's problematic. You're like, who the f you, you sound like Trump, ironically. This mm -hmm. guy you claim to hate, you're him. It's all defund the police, but you act like cops. You can't say this, you can't talk about that, you can't joke about this. <laughs> like, why don't you just beat me with a nightstick right now, you cunt? I'm dying here. <laughs> oh shit. They, they're that's so great. mean and uh and hateful and they want to ruin you. <laughs> I'm a sweet person, we gotta help people. He shouldn't have a job. Get rid of him. It's like, what are we doing? Which one is it? Are you sweet and nice and a hero? Or are you a terrifying human being who wants to ruin people's lives? Oh, man. He said fag in 1988. He's the devil. Well, how come I can't evolve? Blow me, whore. <laughs> Jesus. You can evolve, but I can't. All right. It's just so contradictory and it sounds bullshit. hypocrisy. It and sounds it's all bullshit. about them. They don't actually care about people. If I go, hey, I was molested by a 55-year-old. He was molested by a 13-year-old when he was nine. <laughs> ah, that's nothing. We need some juice. Like, what is that? He was nine. What's more juicy than that? What's more What's more fun than not fucking a nine-year-old? <laughs> Sorry. I went off the rails. <laughs> Oh, that's that's fucking great. Hey, thanks. I just I get worked up, and it, it's so clear and obvious. No, it, it is very clear and obvious, and I just love the the fact that uh, <laughs> you touch on it that way because that's the way a lot of us feel. But you fucking you move around all set. There's nothing worse than having what the fuck you want to say in a humorous way be compromised or overthinking it. It's just hard enough, right? It's all right. it's hard enough, right? Yes. And now we're yes. like. You know, we're going into this shit like, am I going to get in trouble? Like, this is <laughs> just don't have fun. I know. It's a comedy show. Yeah, I made a joke and, about and, a trans person, but I don't hate them all. Right, and no one's joke. left a fucking co a comedy show and shot a place up inspired by the comedy show. It's, it never had happened. Oh, that's a great point. Great right? Point. So it's like, we don't produce, like, hateful, you know, uh, a mentality. It's, yes. It, 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 sometimes a little distasteful. It's, 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 it's vulgar, but that's all it is. That's all it and is. We, we, everyone is guilty about all of us have a little dirt, uh, dirt bag in us. You have to fucking embrace it. Stop acting like you're better than the next motherfucker because we're all, you know, made up of it. Exactly. We're all people. That's what. That's the weird thing. We're all flawed. Everybody's like, he's evil. He's evil. She's evil. It's like you are too. You just you just didn't get caught, or you just your shit's not out there. We're all fucked. That's why every time somebody calls you out. Somebody goes, tit, 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 tit. oh, in 1999, you kicked an Asian lady down the stairs. And we're like, oh, shit, look, see, nobody's perfect. And then we just do it again next week with another thing. It's like, haven't we learned yet? And here's, here's what really bugs me is we say we care about this and that, but like, like Shane Gillis, you know him with the Asian slur, mm -hmm. he got caught on a podcast. So he gets fired, he gets uh, called a racist for five years or whatever. And SNL doesn't get any trouble for never hiring an Asian. To me, it's way worse to never hire an Asian than it is for a comedian to make a joke about Asians on a podcast. What's worse, the joke or actual actions? Like, what's worse, uh, me making a black joke or me running a store and going, don't hire blacks? Isn't Great that point. actually worse? That's but we just point. see the, the soundbite and we I run with I, it. I didn't even know that uh, SNL never had an Asian person. Never had an Asian before. I think they had Rob Schneider. He was like one-fourth Filipino. But I mean, <laughs> that doesn't count. He presents as white. Yeah. That's the new thing. But, and, and, uh, yeah. and, 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 when you, and when you go in talking about, oh, I'm one-fourth Asian, no one cares. You know what no, I'm saying? Like, no, anytime no, I no. try to explain to someone, I got, I'm, you know, I'm 25% Dominican, people go to sleep. <laughs> 
<laughs> like no one cares. And no one like, cares. Yeah, every time like. I have a friend. He's a comic. He's redhead. For yeah. Christ's sake, he's like, yeah, I'm Cherokee Indian. I'm like, no, you're not. You're fucking white. <laughs> right. I don't come with this Cherokee shit. Right. Yeah. You know, well, like, the, here's my Arrowhead collection. You're like, shut up. You're a honky. You're, you're fucking redhead from yeah. Canada. Like, you're not <laughs> Cherokee. What's the name of your tribe? The Running Ginger. <laughs> yeah. Come on. No one's ever. No one's ever. Oh my god, that's so interesting. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you got some Navajo in there too. It's like no right. one cares. I, no one cares. You're a person. I'm a person. Let's uh, make love, not war. Have a drink and uh, hang out. That's all it is. Yeah, four hundred million sperm didn't make it. We made it. Let's try to enjoy it. For real. Sorry, I got off on a tear, and I, I, I love I, it. But people complain to me all day. Oh, another guy can't talk about cancel culture. I'm like, all right, all right, I'll talk about something else. So what maybe we should move on. What, what do you think uh, about? The b- b- boxing and the state of it is that's it now with because I want to kind of I've always asked everybody who comes in here I'm asking how they feel about a Jake Paul fighting you know and representing boxing in a whole new light I think it's kind of cool in a way because he's just some rando YouTube guy and at least he's putting his money where his mouth is he's like he's a decent he's uh, what's the other one? There's Jake and Logan, his brother, right? Yeah, Jake actually, I think, has a, some moves. Yeah, I don't know about the Logan guy. He's too handsome. It bothers me. But the Jake guy is pretty good. I'm not saying he's a, an amazing boxer, but I think he's pretty good for a, a non-boxer like a YouTube guy. I agree. So, I th- and I also kind of like he, it. I, I think he l- loves the sport. Yes, he yeah. respects it. Yeah, he loves the sport. I don't care for it. So I'm torn between. Well, you're a real boxing guy. Yeah, I'm just an outsider going. But, I, I like boxing and I watch it. But there's this purist, you know, yeah. who are talking about, oh, it's disrespectful to boxing. How can you know? I'm like, it's generating a lot of money for boxing. It's smart. I mean, it's all hype. It's all promo. And they're, those guys, all they have is a huge audience. So it's a perfect, it, it, and, it makes sense. Uh, it, young, fresh eyes yes. looking into the sport. Yes. So a lot of these guys. Young will, white guys. Yeah, they'll go into the gym. Oh, low, you know, whoever, yeah. they'll go into the gym because... You know, uh, Logan, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jake Paul uh, is boxing. They might, they want to try their hand in it. Yeah. Um, it's uh, a lot of those guys he's uh, working with to prepare him for the fights are Legit. pro boxers. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the money stream is being spread out. Yeah. And it's entertaining for a lot of people. I don't care for it. I wouldn't pay for that. I wouldn't pay for to watch the Jake Paul against the uh, um, Ben Askren fight. I'll wait. I'll wait too. I'll wait 24 hours on YouTube. A little yeah, grainy. Same, same. I'll do that. It's like porn. I'm not paying for it, but I'll watch it. And, and also, <laughs> here's how I equate it. We're we're real comics. We do this. We do sets. We work out bits. We can do an hour, whatever it is. The, you know, the real art of stand up comedy. If some TikTok queef comes along and does one of these and gets eight zillion followers and then starts doing comedy clubs, every comic goes, oh, look at this poser. Get out of here. That's our room. That's our space. They're taking over these young douches. But if he actually turns out to care about it, respect it, do sets, do reps, get up, write, tweak, rewrite, I'm fine with it. And that's how I feel about Jake. And that's exactly how I feel. I was just going to – I was going to say – because in comedy, we deal with the same shit. Yeah. We deal with the guy who fucking did a dance. Yes. Got a million followers. And they're going to be exposed either way. Either way. They, they're going to they're gonna show that, oh, they give, they give a fuck. They're going to go, they're going to be in the trenches. Yeah. They're going to have to do the 45-minute the hour set. Yeah. And it, it's not always going to be their fans. They're going to be in real comedy clubs where right. they got to do these 15, 20-minute sets. They're doing, you know, spots. They got to kill. Fucking, they got, you know, and they're going to figure it out. Um, and he's going to figure it out. Yeah, that's why boxing and comedy are so fun because, A, it's individual. It's me versus you or me versus the crowd. And if you bomb or you get beat up or knocked out, that's it. It's it's justice. <laughs> but it's boxing fair. is way harder because you can get your fucking – you could die. Uh, you could die. <laughs> I mean, they got pads on. But I think that's why MMA is so fun. Uh, are you in MMA? Um, I respect it. I don't know much about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting really into it. I'm loving it. Who do you like? Well, like, what, 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 uh, what has went on recently? There was a heavyweight. Uh, the heavyweight was great. Stipe, he's this big mook from Cleveland. He's a firefighter. He's like the manliest guy ever. And he's a honky. So as a white guy, you kind of go, we have a chance. You know, so that's exciting. And he beat up the guy in Ganyu, who's this fucking monster of a man. He's huge. He's 6'5". He's ripped. They said his punch is like uh, getting hit by a Ford Escort. And Stipe beat him. 
So as a, as a cracker, you go, whoa, look at this. You know, we don't really dominate in sports. That's exciting. And then he just lost to him. So because now that's killing it in golf. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tiger, don't get me started on Tiger. <laughs> that's another guy who likes to fuck. Oh, yeah. He's I a how, he's, he, how he's doing. He was recently in a car accident. He was. Yeah. I don't think he's doing great. Plus, I watched a documentary and he hurt his uh, some kind of muscle. So he hasn't been playing as well. The thing about golf at that level, these guys fuck the fuck up their backs. It's mm. crazy from a single. I mean, it's just the swing. It's that torque. It's that twist. torque. Yeah. Yeah. It gets you. And I mean, then he you said do that he had like four back times. operations or something like that. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I mean, it's a high level, right? Yeah. I mean, and they're swinging like a motherfucker, too, to hit that thing down the drive. But yeah, any anything you go all the way in is going to fuck you up. Even stand up. You know, you start. Look at Kramer. <laughs> Done. Done. Maybe one of the first big cancelings. Do you ever feel with doing with doing stand up that uh, it feels all, all too negative? Because I, I felt like that, but I think that's a personal thing. So my view of like what we're talking about, a lot of what's funny to me is the negative shit, right? Of course, like yeah, hardships. That's right? how it works. And sometimes I feel. If I become that persona too much, because it is a, a persona, I'm a little different right. on stage. Even when I'm here, it's just like it's a little louder, you know. And it's just I'm, I'm I'm dissecting it a little more. Yeah. Do you feel like it it consumes you? I feel like that sometimes, and I feel like that's yes. why I need like positive shit in, in my life as a bad, like wholehearted, clean stuff in my life. Yeah. Like sometimes, just um. Like a zen, whether it be my animals, whether it be running or fitness, I definitely need that because the other side, and this is for me personally, I'm not, I'm not saying that there might be other people who are totally like balanced and healthy, but when I throw myself into the, the creative shit all the time, it feel, I feel off too. It feels unhealthy for me. I think it's completely, I think you're a very healthy guy. Like you're so balanced to get the animals and the wife and the kid and all that and, and then stand up and then boxing. So you're really, I think you're a, a good benchmark for how a, a comic should be. But, but I, yeah, I, I, we I all do throw feel ourselves You in. can't do it all. You know, that's the thing. You can't that's do it thing. all. But for me, I'm happy. But I do know that. It, it it just feels like too much of one thing for me personally. And I don't know if that's the addict in me and it could be. So I need to like spread it out, but I do feel like it could be, it's just a little bit too much. Do you feel like that with standard? Do you ever feel like you need a, a break or you never I do, but my foot is on the gas so hard that sometimes I don't even notice that I need a break. I'm just like, what's next? What's next? What's next? Do and you... I have friends who go, dude, Hey, come meet me for a beer. I'm well, like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And they're like, just stop it. And then when I stop for like 10 minutes and I, I go, uh, uh, you know what? It's okay. Because even Amy Schumer, she talks about how when she uh, like picked up med meditating, like, like it changed her life. I know, I know. I hear that. that you ever spoke to her about that? Yeah, I mean, she's... And, and uh, she does it every morning? Yeah, she's been through a lot. And I've seen her meditate. I've walked, oh, shit, sorry. And uh, I've seen she her do it. She got one eye open. Look yeah. at you guys. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and I, everybody, like Mulaney meditates and Seinfeld meditates. And I think uh, I got to start doing it. You ever tried? I've tried, but you know, you do the, the thing where you, you close your eyes for three minutes. You go, ah, what am I doing? <laughs> it, it, it's, it is kind of funny how people get a meditation app. Like, I'm trying to stay with I my know. phone, but yeah, let me download this on my phone and That's I'm going to meditate true. with my phone in my hand. Yeah, it's so true. I know. It, the phone is taking over everything. I'm trying to think of a good analogy for that. Uh, that's like saying, hey, I got to stop. Uh, I got to start. Uh, I got nothing. Yeah, I gotta, but, oh, oh, I'll put my, uh, my exercise instructions on a Twinkie. Yeah. All right. I blew it. I took too long. But yeah, you're right. It's it's that's that's meditating now. It's like do two minutes. You're good. Everything's just quicker now. Everything's quick. Get a nugget. Get out. But you should just put the phone away. Take an hour. Sit down. I heard this comic say once that he when he wakes up in the morning, he just spends 10 minutes just sitting there. Just think. Just allow your brain to wake up. And I was like, that's good. I'm going to do that. I can make like four minutes and I'm like. What's happening today? What are we doing? It is so strange how something that requires absolutely nothing is, is, is requires so much. Yes. Well said. Well said. Isn't that crazy? It requires absolutely nothing, but it requires so much of you. It, that's hard. That's hard. It's and hard. It's like the, the one thing I absolutely cannot do. I don't run. I yeah. run 10 miles. I'll, you know, I'll do all the shit that I don't necessarily want to do. But no, that's but good I too. Do. But the meditating, I have a feeling that this connection... It's unhealthy. 
it, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this connection is healthy, right? I think, you know, just letting go. And yes. Because you ever wake up in the morning and just feel like frazzled for no reason? Yes. All, all, all fulfilling. All the time. A few things that eliminate that for me Please. is when I wake up, first, I never do the snooze thing. Are you into snoozing? No. I just, just wake yeah, up like, when I wake up. Go the fuck up. If you're snoozing, do you snooze? <laughs> Johnny, you snooze. <laughs> That's actually worse for you. It's worse. Why not just sleep those extra 20 minutes instead of just beep and then hitting it, beep, and then hitting it. Or just get the fuck up. Or get the fuck up. Yeah, because I'll put, my, and this, I've been doing this for years, so this is a practice that works. Because I did the snoozing, and it always felt like the rest of my day is like a, it's a hiccup day. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, like a stuttering, like I'm never on beat. Yes. You know, I'm like, uh, like frazzled. I put my phone 30 feet away from me, set the time for 6 a.m. I'm physically up. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. That shit, the first five minutes sucks. But I'm up. And I got like two hours to do my yeah, thing. Yeah, right? that's good. That's a meditation in a way. Yeah, well, it's a practice. Yeah, right. That one thing is huge. And um, I can't imagine not doing that. But I want to incorporate like the silence beforehand. But it also requires... You know, really putting that shit in your schedule. Yes, yeah, and then doing it again where it's routine over right. and over, and that's that's the way to do it. Shit, I had something about this, but uh, for me, it's alone time. For me, alone time just levels me out. Like me, I live with my lady, and we'll hang out all night. We'll have dinner. She'll cook. I'll I'll make jokes. We're drinking a couple of glasses of wine. It's so nice. We got a big cat. I kick that thing uh, <laughs> across the floor, and then. We watch a TV show and she's like, man, I'm, I'm wiped. And she goes to bed and that's my favorite time. I love it. Not, not because she's gone, but like I got the whole place myself. I can watch whatever I want. Oh, I have best. a snack. I read. I listen to a podcast. I'll do a couple push up. I play the piano and it's like, ah, and I look, you need both. I like having her there. I like doing the shows at night. I like doing the whatever during the day, seeing friends. But that midnight to 2 a.m., that's mine, baby. And I soak it in. That is nice. It's nice. I love a cigar, have a scotch, whatever it is. Yeah. And it's just you. Yeah. It's so funny when you don't have that time often, when you finally get it again, now, now it's, yeah, it's pouring on fast forward. Uh, It's New York (laughs) one plane. You know, I got my boxing gloves, one glove on. Yes. I'm listening to gangster rap. Yes. I might even smoke a cigarette. What am I doing? Throw it out the window. Like I'm this, I'm in, I'm in ankle socks. Yes. And, and, and and my, my dick is looking at me like enough. Like we've had enough. Right. But it's all all I need is an hour of that nonsense. Oh, and that cures you. You're like, it's like a phone recharging. You're like, all right, I'm back. I can move again. Again. And then my wife texts me, are you having a good time with, uh, alone? And I'm like, I'm, not, I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah, you got to be like, I wish you were here, honey. But you're really like, get out of here, you old crazy coos. <laughs> yeah. Even sometimes you get to the airport an hour early and you're like, this is all right. This is good. You know, usually you're like, oh, I got to wait a whole hour. But if you actually see it the other way, flip that coin and go, I got a whole hour to myself. That's why I never got, when, when we were kids, you'd always have that one kid going, what are you doing? I'm bored. And I was like. Bored? I don't want to go hang out with a bored guy. What am I, your entertainment? You figure your shit out, then I'll come over. I'll figure my shit out. I don't want to come entertain you. I mean, that's a leap, but you see what I'm saying. No, absolutely. I was never bored as a kid, and I'm never bored as an adult. There's well, so you, much shit to do. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a dude who, like, who's involved a little bit of everything as yeah. well. Like, you enjoy skateboarding and yeah. shit. And yeah, I got to say, man, you still got the moves. It's been 10 years. I couldn't believe that muscle memory kicked in. And it does stimulate you. In a, in a, it stimulates you. Oh, like, yeah. It's so good. And, like, if you're working on on a special or something having something like that just to do just to break it up yeah it's so healthy well man when i i got a i was in a 12-year relationship broke it off huge crushed you know just sad that breakup sad you know 30 30 years old 29 years old that's why i picked up boxing and i called you and i said i've always wanted to box i never had the balls to try it I know a guy who boxes or who trains it i might as well hit you up and it just felt great i needed it and yeah. that kind of saved me. Yeah, and I tell everybody, because uh, I turned a few comics that the 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 same uh, discipline you have with your stand up, you applied in the short time we boxed you together. Think? You showed up on time. 
You never said no to anything. Your attitude was just like, I'm doing the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you smell like whiskey, but you're like, I'm doing the work. Yeah, I was hung over a lot, and it, uh. it would be a hangover because it was such a grueling workout. <laughs> and then you still had your wits about you. There was like a comic just leaving, and like, boy, is he slow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that guy. Uh, yeah, Damian Lemon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, was a, but I, that was a wild time because I was single again. Yeah. So I was, you know, banging all kinds of gash. And there was a few times I remember jump rope and be like, oh, my, my chlamydia hurts, you know, <laughs> Cause I was so I was such a trashy guy. Then. Isn't it wild how when you're single and fucking like that, when you're just out there like that, how you're having a good time and you feel free. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. But with that, you know, you got the liberty to sleep with who you want, sure. hang out late. But that when I was single like that, I never felt like I was in. I never. I felt like I was in prison at the same time because I was a hostage to my bad mistakes. I was having unprotected sex. Right. So every weekend, right. I'm at the fucking doctor's office, and she's like this, 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 this young hip doctor. She's like, Sergio, why don't you just wear a condom?" I know. She's looking know. at me like this with a pen in her mouth. She's like, "You know, you're not gonna get AIDS unless you're having anal sex with someone who has AIDS. It's unlikely. You might have a kid or get chlamydia, but where the fucking condom?" She would talk to me that way, and I was like, "That." Yeah, <laughs> it's true, and but it's so hard. And hey, ladies out there, I don't know what, if I'm camera one, camera B, <laughs> but I can't tell how many women are out there. You're in bed, you've had a couple of beers. She's going, just just take the condom off. Just and you're like, what are you crazy? She's like, just take it. That's happened to me nine thousand times, but no one talks about that. But uh, that's a real epidemic. Um, but yeah, it, it's true. This that condom, it's it's tough because you're in the moment, you're heated up, and hold on. <laughs> Boy, that's a real mood ruiner, isn't it? Just the unrolling and uh, yeah, it's a bummer. And I, I, I never really, uh, I never mind condoms. I never really, you know, I. But no, they're not even that bad. They're not even that bad. I mean, and I've and I've had and I had pussy so good that I've come on impact with a condom. Wow, that's pathetic. Oh, I heard about that. Come on, impact with a yeah, condom that's on. That's bad news. Jesus. On yo, you what know are you, what? Eleven. <laughs> I was well in my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. We've all had two pumps, and she's like, "Oh, let's go for hours." I'm like, "I gotta get a cab." Yeah, I mean, this one time came on impact. She couldn't believe it. Like, there was no way that happened. Yeah. So she's like, "Like, what's going on back there?" <laughs> I'm just like, I put the condom like in my <laughs> jean pocket. I tied it or not, and I, I, so I gave it a few more pumps. Yeah, like, yeah. But it was like. Becoming flaccid already. Of course, already. yeah. It was pathetic. Yeah, we. I've been there, man. And then, like, I stopped and I like I rested my hands and like my palms are getting sweaty, you know. And she yeah. just looked back and said, "What's going on back there?" And I remember I tied the condom in a knot and I put it in my jean pocket, like, uh, like on the floor. And then I, I like I, I was giving her like a half-ass massage. Uh, yeah. And she's like. Like she grabs her shirt and she like clenches it by her chest. I said, like, "Is everything okay?" I'm like. I'm all fucked up and high. I'm like, I just, you know, we don't know each other. Well, uh, I just think we should talk a little more. <laughs> and the, the five o'clock sun is coming oh, up the and worst. the birds are chirping. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still horny, but I can't get up again. Can't get up, And yeah. now she's just like, does my vagina smell? Does right. he not like me? And I'd rather her believe that than to think I came on impact. Yes. Good point. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> now it's off you at least. But I'll tell you, I think that's when ass eating was invented. When some guy busted immediately and he was like, I got to do something. Ah, you know, and he just starts going to town because he's got to pleasure her some way. So, but I've gone the opposite. The come on impact, I've gone, I just can't come. So you got to fake it. You ever had that? Yeah. And then you kind of like take the condom off. You're like, woo, that was wild. She's like, let me see it. You're like, oh, no, it's bloody and not gross. <laughs> you know, come on, you throw that in the toilet and flush it real quick. Uh, yeah, but, sex, sex is fucking weird. I've had, I, I've it had. Is. I don't know if the month of it means anything with someone's disposition. I don't know, but it's fun, right? Yeah. So I was fucking dating a girl. She has, happens to be a Leo. They say Leos are very dominant in bed. Okay. This girl was dominant. She had a very strong jawline too. It might have not have been a female. <laughs> <laughs> but she My was from hurts. she was from Brooklyn, and I remember we were doing it, and she was just kind of like, I think she was rolling her eyes while I was hitting a dog because I was like, I just felt like she was dissatisfied. Yeah. But, and part of me, the twenty year old me, didn't care. I was like, fuck, I meant you know. Yeah. And then she. Said, turn around. She told me to turn around. Oh, God. She said, lay down. And she went like that with her finger, like lay down. I was like, and I laid down and she started riding me. I don't know how this happened, Norm, 
but my legs like lifted up and she started like fucking me missionary. Uh, but she, uh, <laughs> like it was like she had the dick. Yeah, yeah. But with her back, she was like, and I was like, and I, my legs were way too high. Like at uh, first, it started off with her riding me. <laughs> it started off with her riding me. Yeah. Okay, and I was fine oh with that. God. And then she did something where she like laid flat on my chest, got in, and then my legs started to protrude out. Uh, and I I saw the white of my thighs just got higher and higher. Oh my god, that's and, amazing! Yeah, and she was pumping the shit out of me, and I was—I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> no, did not, not like it. Oh yeah, I mean, I, it was—it uh, was a sight. Yes. I was in a Brooklyn a basement apartment, yep. getting done missionary style <laughs> by a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And you ever think about. I was uh, hoping you would say it happened to you too, but uh, I'm alone in this one. <laughs> well, I've been dominated. I mean, I, the 55 year old really threw me around. But you ever, you ever think about what a woman goes through? Like, my girl likes the legs up and all that. And I'm like, man, what is that like? And so, you know, she'll go to work. And I'm like, what is that like? And I'll put my. And it just feels so emasculating. <laughs> I don't know how women do it, but I guess they like it. They're women. That's what I felt. I think I felt like a breeze through my asshole. Oh. Like from the, I'm like, I'm like this, like the vent starts to come. I was like, oh, why is my asshole just yes. open? Yes. And not to mention, <laughs> girls do doggy style. Their asshole is completely exposed. I don't want my asshole ever seeing the light of day or a, or a table lamp. <laughs> Nothing. I don't want ever to have my asshole pointing at the ceiling. Yeah, that's Even a when tough I, one. Even when I leave the room, I put a shirt in the back there or a cork or something. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, like, I, it's annoying when you get someone who's doing, like, if you're with someone doggy style and they're not comfortable. Yeah. Like, they got the hump in the back. Like, come on, loosen yeah, the fuck up. Yeah, the hump is Like, bad. then you got to, like, knead them, yeah. like, into, like, a <laughs> like slope. Dough. Yeah, like, uh, come on, give me the slope. Right, I don't right. want to see, like, I don't want, like, a hump. I don't want something like a turtle shell. Yeah. You know what I'm talking I'm about? I'm with you. I'm with you. I Nobody want you to be hump. comfortable. I want you. I want the ass to be high. Yes. I want you to be like this, like a like a precious moment. Yes. Doll. Not like a kid, but <laughs> Jesus. Like but a, like a, a precious moment. Yeah. I want yeah. you to be comfortable. I get it. With the, the face down, ass up, and you know, and maybe you know, say something nasty. But yes. if you're like all oh, <laughs> fucking ogreish, yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's bad news. We're very visual. Yes, we are. We are. It's just fascinating that how different men, and we, we talk all day about how we're the same, but we, we're so different in that way that, like, they want to be dominated. And I have friends, guy friends, who like being dominated, too, but women want to be thrown around, and it's so weird because I don't want that at all. Like, I don't want to be choked. I don't want my hair pulled. But, yeah, to each his anal. <laughs> Yeah, no, some dudes want their testicles to be stepped on. Ah, that's true. And it's always powerful men in Wall Street and shit. I can't even imagine how that would be enjoyable. Yeah. But it's mental. It's all mental. Yeah. So no matter, no one's exempt from that either. Right. Right, It's amazing how, what what, what gets people off. Mm -hmm. Right. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for some motherfuckers, like, okay, hip hop is a fucking. It's hard. If yeah. you're a gay dude in hip hop, yeah. you know how much you got to hide? It's already a bullshit image. Right. No, the guys are not killers. Right. And so imagine being in that field of work yeah. where the lifespan is like fucking six years already. Yes. You know, Good like a great Danes live longer than you. <laughs> and like now, you know, you can't even be yourself. Right. So there's this um producer. He's not even a rapper. His name is Mr. C. And I talk about that openly because everyone knows. He likes trannies. Okay. And the guy has enough. He, he discovered Biggie. Like, you wow. have money. You got money. Yeah. You could go to the Waldorf, mm-hmm. overseeing the Central Park, and get you a couple of chicks with dicks and have the time of your life. Nothing wrong with that. But he gets caught left and right under a fucking bridge in uh, Queens, getting chicks with dicks. But that's part of the excitement. That's part of the excitement. You know? And it's just like a fu- it's a roll of the dice, dogs. You're betting on the slow horse. Yes. <laughs> because, I mean, I guess it's fascinating to these guys. So the, 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 the likelihood of a fucking boy in blue, a cop, Right. Knocking on your window with a nightstick. Right. That makes you probably come harder. Ah! Yeah. 
<laughs> Look at that black knight stick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just wild to me what people do. You know what it's like? The, it's the big uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. I know this is a decade old now. No, but, but it Arnold, makes sense. He's banging a Kennedy. He's dating or he's married to Maria Shriver, whatever her name yeah, is. Yeah, and he's banging some housekeeper with a you know wide, flat ass. Yes, yes. She looks <laughs> I like, imagine that she likes, looks, she looks, looks like Kathy Bates or, or the Michelin Man or some <laughs> shit. And you're like, you got, or even if you want to cheat, go get a beautiful blonde in Vegas or whatever the hell, you know, but it's the housekeeper. There's something to that. She's in the house. She's the maid. She's scrubbing. The ass is shaking. It's, it's, it's something to the, the magic of that. Like Jim Norton has all these stories about how he likes to get the prostitute on eighth Avenue, lock the door, do it in the, in the alley. And it, all that is the, the ritual. Yes. So it's, it's interesting, right? And, that stuff could get you in trouble if you're hiding it, right? I mean, but that's probably the, the allure in it. Exactly. That's probably, so when I was doing drugs, that was part of it, like making the, the, the call to the drug yes, dealer. Yes, yes. You know, I used to delete the number. Right. And then I was like, oh, I got to get the number. I got to uh-huh. find it. And, oh, you got a number? Yeah. And it was like, okay, now I'm doing this search. Yeah. Right? So now I'm like on Facebook looking for drug dealers like hey it's you know just checking in with you no one's checking their facebook at one o'clock in the morning but i'm hoping yeah and then he might so here's my number now i got a number right and it's like he's in the bronx so yeah. maybe, you know and it's all that shit it's the the leading up to it is yeah. it's the foreplay that's yeah, foreplay exactly there you go but um so there's a lot of that that humans like you know <laughs> where it was just it's yeah, and then you fucking you get it. It's like, oh, what the fuck am I doing? Like, yeah, like, oh, it's so gross. true. It's so true. But uh, you got to learn what your shit is, and then try to control it. You know, but you can't control it until you know what it is. That's why they say alcoholics need to admit they have a problem. Blah blah blah. Right. I mean, it's got to be tough. I, I mean, we're talking about shit that's taboo to some people, but we don't care. Like, yeah. if any of my friends or into like trannies or they're cheating on their, their wife. That, that's your business. You know, I'd rather you be into a tranny and be single than be cheating on your wife because now I got to I gotta really lie to someone who I, I right, probably know your wife. Right, that makes sense. Oh, you know, I was a search. No, he wasn't. I was like at the snake museum. Like yeah, he wasn't yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah. That's I'd a rather, great place for a tranny, uh, <laughs> tranny visit. It's called the snake museum. Right. You got to find the snake. Sorry, that was horrible. No. But uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. <laughs> what yeah. I'm saying is, is this imagine being a fucking pedophile dealing with that shit. I know, I know. I'm so, aren't you so I'm, glad you're not attracted to kids? What a, so what a lucky glad. break we got, but not being attracted to kids. Yo, dogs, in case you think your life is fucking, oh my God, I lost my job during the pandemic, be happy. You don't want to fuck the kids. So true. That's a great point. Yeah. Like, that's a huge weight off our shoulders. I know. We just That's one thing we'll never have to worry about. We never have to worry about that. Yeah. Also... Now, this is going to get controversial. You know, who's a hero is the pedophile that wants to fuck kids and doesn't. But that guy will never get credit. He can't go around going, man, I'm dying to fuck kids. <laughs> but I don't because nobody hears this, the second part. They just go, what? He's dying to fuck kids. Get, 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 get him out of the yeah, playground. Yeah, you don't get an award for that. Yeah, but that's a really good guy right there because he's dying to do it. He didn't choose that. He just has this horrible urge, and he knows it's horrible, and he says, I'm not doing it. That guy's a hero. What, what, <laughs> what was that movie with Kevin Bacon? And he, he, he did some shit like that. Oh, what the, was that? The Woodsman. Did, the Woodsman. Yes. Now, I, what did he uh, do for him not to get an erection? He did something. I don't remember. Maybe he opened up a magazine with adults in it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Listen, so I tried everything. When I was trying to get clean from, like, I was doing a lot of blow. Yeah. And, I, and, and so drinking would inspire those to provoke, provoke me. Yes. Right? So I couldn't drink. So I did everything. I did the, like, oh, yeah. But they said, uh, here's a pill you take. Uh-oh. You know, and the pill, if, if you take that pill, when you drink, you'll, you'll throw up violently. Whoa. Let me tell you something. That pill didn't work. Uh, <laughs> it didn't work. Uh, I got like the, I got like the knockoff one. Yeah. Because my insurance was like dirtbag insurance. Yeah. And I got the knock, and I was drinking like a fucking caramel. I was like, ah. And it didn't, it didn't make it you work. puke. But there should be a pill like that for pedophiles. Ooh. Like you can't get your dick up. It's right. like the reverse Viagra. They're right. so into getting dicks hard. Yes. What about keeping dicks soft? For Good the pedophiles. point. Good. Well, in the old days, they used to cut your balls off. Back in the old That's days. That's a little extreme. Of course, I agree. <laughs> but hey, if my kid's about to get poked by a... Yeah, no, you're getting your balls cut off. I'd rather his balls get cut off than my kid get poked. 
So maybe, so I want this show to be sponsored nah. <laughs> by the anti <laughs> erection pill. There you go. To keep pedophiles at bay. The AEP <laughs> is sponsoring this. There's got to be an anti erection pill out there because uh, there's all kinds of shit that's like, watch out, the side effects are, are uh, ED. So we just got to take those ED side effect pills and give it to you for ED. Right. Have you ever taken one? Oh, uh, Blue Chew and all that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does it work? Oh, my God. Does it give amazing. you like a headache? I feel like all the no, blood. No, no, nothing. Shit. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to put my baby, my baby boy in a little bow tie right there. <laughs> my girl, my, my wife comes back from my overseas. Well, hey, what? <laughs> I just grease myself with some baby oil like yeah. this. You know, I've heard, I don't have, I've heard, you know, like I have hair here, but the rest of the body is pretty bald. So Damn, it's glistening. Yeah, man. It's like Candle a seal. lights. I, I will say I've done the, because we're getting older, you know, and I have this real problem. This is how fucked up my brain is. If I really like you, I can't get it up. If it's some gal in the middle of nowhere, we're having a few beers and and whatever, and I'll never see her again. I'm rock hard. I'm a porn star. Or if it's like an ugly chick, oh, rock hard. I always liked like girls who weren't that good looking because my confidence was sky high. Yeah, yes, exactly. I move around different. Like I'm gonna walk around naked around them. Right, and you feel like you're giving a charity. Look at me helping <laughs> out this lady in a wheelchair. You know. Yeah, man. Well, the, I met a girl one time, and she had a stomach that was like a shriveled up prune, Ugh. and she was very self conscious about it. And I was walking around like a god. Like, uh, I was like semi, and I had my hands on my hips. I said, don't worry about that. Don't. I said, that don't worry me none. I'm making up sentences. <laughs> that don't worry me none. But that's cool. You're a cool guy. <laughs> I mean, she should get a cummerbund, for Christ's yeah, sake. So but she yeah. Was, yeah, she was all like, you know, very self-conscious about it. Like yeah. crossing her legs. I said, like, don't worry it. about that. I, I gave her my shirt. Oh, you knot. see, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, sure, you're talking about her later publicly, but you're a sweetheart. <laughs> no names. No names. Okay. You got that right. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blue Chew is good stuff. It's fun. It's just fun getting a boner. You're like a 14-year-old again. Yeah, so, um, the hyenas, may they rest in peace, Chris know, and Yannis, their, their show was sponsored by uh, Blue, Blue Chew. That's Meet Mine is, too. Oh, great, man. Yeah, they're getting around. Tuesday, Tuesdays are stories with you and... Uh, Joe List. Joe List. Yeah. And then you have Sam Morrill. Uh, we we might may be, be drunk. drunk. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. We, we feel like the last comics who really booze, so we started a pod about it. A lot of guys are uh, uh, clean, right? Clean, like soda's clean, list is clean. I think uh, Chris barely drinks. Yeah, Schultz barely drinks. Tim Dillon is sober, so like, yeah, we're this, we're a dying breed. David Tell's sober. Nick Griffin's sober. You know, Colin Quinn's sober. I think you're sober. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So we still knock them back. But you don't you, you you're good. Like I'm good. I, I went through years yeah. of of blacking out, but now I can kind of tame it. Yeah, blacking out is scary. I got mugged three times in a year. They were from blackouts. All from blackouts. I don't. I don't even blame the guys because I was like I was the guy bouncing off the do wall. You, do on you, the sidewalk. Do you remember the robbery or just like you glimpses? Just, glimpses because it was oh. so scary that your kind of brain goes, "Hey, douche! You like you should be uh, around for this," oh. you know. Uh, one time in Hell's Kitchen, I was at Rudy's. Hell's Kitchen is, is a dirtbag area, too. Dirt bag. I call it the Black Forest because mm -hmm. it's like it got all those garment factories. Yes. And it's very, all the streets are very dark. Yes. It's like that's like uh, been suspended in time. That's like old New York. You think? So, yeah, I feel like like the Hell's Kitchen, the West Side. Yeah. And the, 40s that's the it's shit seedy. is being consistently seedy <laughs> consistent <laughs> that's true so what happened so i love there was this great bar which is it rest in peace it's gone now because of the pandemic but it was called rudy's it's been okay, there i remember years. rudy's great dive bar the you know, red leather seats they give you a free hot dog with every beer i remember that which is a weird gimmick but i was so broke that i needed to get drunk and eat so i'd go to rudy's and uh, eventually I got cut off on hot dogs, which is sad. <laughs> Not even booze. They were like, you've had too many hot dogs. But they threw me out like Jazzy Jeff style because I was going around like <laughs> trying to talk to people. And they were like, you got to go, man. You're bothering the patrons. So I'm, I'm, I don't remember any of this, but I think I was walking down 8th Avenue. And I took a, a right or 9th Avenue. I took a right on one of those side streets. And I was like, I'm so wiped. I got to get all the way back to Brooklyn. I'll never make it. Let me take a little nap right here in like a little alcove you know down three steps an oh, apartment God. building doorway and i just kind of curled up and i fell asleep for i don't know how long half an hour and uh, three guys four guys are going through my shit get a, get a shit get a, and i wake up and i go whoa what the fuck are you doing he goes he's getting up hit me and i went out again 
And then I woke up with the sunshine and uh, all my shit was gone. Wallet, keys, joke book, change, pen, phone. Oh. I know. You got to start all over. And you're like, all right, well, I'll go to the bank. Oh, I don't have an ID. All right, well, I'll go go drive, take the train home. I don't have a Metro car. You know, just everything is so hard because you got to start. I'll go buy a phone. I don't have any money. You know, you got to figure it all out. It was a nightmare. And that, that, that happened to you three times over. In a year. So that was a rough year. That was a bad year. I was so <laughs> lonely and insecure. So, so the COVID years are fucking. <laughs> COVID's nothing. Yeah, the like grocery stores are open. You know, you can get you can get booze delivered. We're we're so pampered now. All, all things, all things considered, you know, I'm empathetic and sympathetic, sensitive towards the deaths. Yo, COVID year hasn't been bad for me. I've learned a lot about myself, Same. and I've been able to surround myself. With people I really enjoy, not yeah. none of the nonsense. I cut out a lot of the fat. Good for you. Do you feel the same way? You get to like you had a choice of who you worked with, what kind of work you want to do. Yeah, it's true. And I you mean, know, we're very lucky. I mean, look, some guy lost his restaurant, or some lady lost her her. Yeah, but that's not the shop. end of the world. It's no, a it's big the piece world. of your world. But you know, let me tell you, losing that shit can inspire some beautiful. That's things. true. From struggle does come great. They were bitching about the delivery truck. Right. Oh, the right. bread is not here. Right. Oh, Sam is late to work. They were complaining about something. Yeah. Now they got one problem. But some people love that restaurant. They're like, my my grandpa started it. it. But yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. It's still things. You still got you. You got your family. Right. Well, unless they died of COVID. But you still got your your do life. I, do you know anyone who died from COVID? No, I knew a guy who went to the hospital and he swore to God. He's like, I will die. I can feel it that I'm gonna oh. die. And he's like a 35 year old guy. So, uh, you know, the shit is no joke, but I do think we played it a little hard. I think we got a little fast and loose with it. And I think we got weird, weirdly shaming. Hey, you're not wearing this and you're doing that. You're shaming. And you're like, just the is other this day, what we I got, right now? I got shamed for not wearing a mask. There you go. There, there was like 12 feet away from me. They're like, no mask. And they did the thing with the eye. No mask. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, everything is highlighted a little more because of the eyes. So yeah, no mask. that's right. What was it uh, uh, on the sidewalk? Yeah. Damn. It's just, I'm just walking. It happened to me twice. Really? Yeah. I don't get the outside. We're outside. I'm 12 yeah. feet away from you. Why should I wear a mask? Yeah. But I wear. I play ball. I wear it. You know, I want to be a good guy and not get yelled at. But some people used COVID to, like, be a dick. And yeah, we do that with everything, I, I, I mean, guess. It, yeah. It's something to, you know, this is what I'm fighting for. Right. Like, all of a sudden, you care uh, care about me and my family? And they're like, well, you could hurt me. And I'm like, well, you talking to me and yelling at me is, o- is the only going to hurt you more. <laughs> so you could have just moved on, but I get it. The, 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 the city did fuck up with uh, not helping the restaurants, though. They left the oh, restaurants hanging yeah. big time. Brit- it's UK super dirtbag. Helped the restaurant. Not, they never closed. Here, they all closed. They, they were like, here's some, <laughs> we, got a, we got a place you can go to get some two-by-fours. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. You're going to only fill that up to 30%. Right. And, uh, you know, what if it snows too much you're gonna have to take that down yeah it's like i felt bad for restaurant oh, horrible, horrible. And so they fucked up changing the rules and then they go by the heat lamps then the heat the cold air goes away and then they build this shed which is basically indoors again and that's okay <laughs> yeah none of it makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we do the uh, airport, 12 feet, 6 feet, wear a mask, and then you're 6 feet away, then you get on the plane and you're at single file line in a fucking cigar tube, you know, with the doors closed. You're like, so this is okay, and you can take the mask off when you eat your Cheez-Its, but then you gotta put it back on! <laughs> so we all in unison have our mask off in a cigar tube with, with a sealed in air. I mean, it's all kook. It's all theater. Well, we, we people just don't know, right? It's I get like, it. It's, it's like we just don't know. It's like, but it's such bullshit. A lot of it is such bullshit. Yeah. The yeah. restaurants were such a like. It was such bullshit that I, I, it was it was it was hard to watch. It you know, really because, was. You know, I, I was joking around a moment ago about you know, the, but it was sad because a lot of restaurants where I do, which I love that been open for years I closed down, and I it's know. fucked up because they got no help. No help. You know what it felt like? A drill sergeant. You know, he's like, "Give me ten push ups." The restaurant's like, "All right, here you go." And he's like, "Get up, you pussy." You're like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." I said ten push ups. Oh, okay, okay. You know, they just kept changing the rules on him and yeah. then just throwing shit at him, and there's no way they could succeed. No way. 
No way. Jose. But uh, there's a, you know, a, a few of those uh, outdoor restaurant, you know, put, put together some comedy shows. That's true. I mean, the comedy, we're like a bacteria. We'll just find a way. We're, we're fucking They no one doing comedy in the very beginning, right? Yeah. It's just like in just weird places. Like. Right, right. I'm in the park, you know, and there's a kid playing and I'm talking about pedophilia, you know, he's getting a Frisbee thrown at him and a bird shits on you. A mosquito bites your neck. Uh, I had an old joke. I did a show in a field. I actually heard a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> old joke, old joke, but yeah. It's it, it, before we wrap this up. You know what's interesting, and I I just like to look at the positive, right? So a guy like So Joe Richardson, I even spoke about in the last episode. Amazing. This is the thing, right? So there's been lows for a lot of people, but highs for you know. He just started his business. I then know. COVID hits. COVID but he's hits. in a small town in Royersford, Pennsylvania, and the dude doesn't fold. He could have no. easily said, "Let's pack no. this up." Uh, you know, the place to work with me. I don't know what the arrangement was, but the fucking guy does outdoor shows. He gets a fucking tent, gets a few laps, and he gets the best, the best acts in the country to perform and thrive. Thrive. And it was just like so beautiful to see. Like all yes. the comics were felt like, Oh, this is a, these are great shows. Right, he was having a great time. The town of Royersford was getting the best talent. He got the key to the city, I think. I mean, the guy was, uh, yeah, he had a comedy club indoors. It it wasn't really cooking, and then then the pandemic happened. He built the stage. He bought sand, put it in a parking lot. Then it got cold. Bought a tent. Bought heaters. I mean, this guy's had Dave Attell, Nikki Glaser, uh, fucking Andrew Dice Clay, Jim Brewer, Sam J. Like, and one thing that's huge. consistent is that they all had a good time. I never heard someone say, "Oh, that 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 gig sucked." And in fact, I think uh, his show indoors, like if the COVID never happened, no one would have went there. That yeah, shit yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. But that's that's the that's the shake. That's the breaks. You know, right. that's how it works out. But I mean, talk about adapting. Talk about a fucking iron spirit on this guy. Like, all right, what else you got? I'll I'll, I'll make it work. Right. I mean, pretty that, amazing. Yeah, it, it is. It's pretty impressive. I'm very happy for him. Um, just hope that, um, yeah, that the tent doesn't blow over and, you know, keeps it. Uh... Well, here's the question. When COVID goes away and we all get vaccinated under the overpass with the trans people, are is he going to keep the outdoor set up th- or is he going to go back inside? I think we just got to listen to the people, right? right? Because I have a feeling. I ask myself the same questions with fitness. I'm doing 90% of my sessions outdoors. I got through the winter with that shit. What? Yeah. I mean, I'm a little weather beaten. Yeah. And I have no toenails. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been frostbit three times. Right. But, you know, it's, I don't know if people want to go back, especially if you're required to wear the mask indoors all the time. I think that's a big. That's a bitch. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bitch for a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to deal with the mask. I'm indifferent. I could, I just want to go with the flow, but I do like the idea of doing my own thing. That, that control. I like that. Yeah. And you don't have to pay rent and, and lock up and all that. But I do think things are going to open up. I think, look, the comedy clubs are open for the first time in New York in a year this Friday, tomorrow, what is that? Two days away. They're already sold out. All of them. People, they, they, they want it. They want it. This show's going to be fire. I know. I know. I forgot to put a veils in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the guy going, can I get on? But uh, <laughs> I can't wait. I just want to hang out. I want to see that energy. I want to see tickets torn. It, I want to see seats filling. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. All right, man. We're going to wrap this up. Mark, you're the fucking man. Thank you for doing this. Thanks I appreciate for having you me. coming out. Um, we're a half hour over. To so my people. Sorry, folks. Not the Be Frank Network. I appreciate you having me. Sound lines, we took full advantage. And uh, yeah, that's the Chacon Show. That's the DBS podcast with my man, Mark Norman. Thank you so much. We out of here. Johnny, my photographer, Johnny. also my trainee, super heavyweight champion, Britain stand up. Oh, really? Dylan White versus P- Pavekian. That was a great fight. It was a great fight. We'll talk about it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Praise Love y'all.